Hello, this is Minder. I'm coming at you with a very strange but very effective PvP build. I'm calling it the Bombardier Beetle. I've played about 30 PvP matches so far with this. I just made it a couple hours ago and I haven't lost so far. I've played pretty much all of the major archetypes, you know, skybox missile builds, double Zimmerman, that kind of stuff. But I thought I'd go ahead and make a video on it. I'm using the stun guns. The Earshot grenade launchers, these are the, the big ones, the big boys with 90 blast radius, 2000 damage. Mind Beta Head because it has high stability. I use this one for most of my builds. Noctri her chest. Uh, Alba Arms because they're low weight and we're very weight constrained on this build. We're using a Noctri her frame with Earshots. So, uh, Noctri her legs. These are actually very important to the build because you need to be able to jump very well. Uh, you need a high jump, which this does have, but I don't want reverse jointed because dodging is important on this build and reverse jointed is actually bad at sustained dodging because the dodge makes you go airborne, which you don't want. Uh, we've got the BST G2 booster because it has the highest walking speed and good quick boosting. Ocellus FCS because this is a close range build and the air shots don't actually mind if you miss quote unquote miss at longer range than the Ocellus can cover because they have 90 explosion radius. They'll just hit anyway, even if you miss them, quote unquote. NGI 000 generator because it has very high capacity and uh, it's just great. I love this generator. We also need a lot of energy output for the ear shots and we're running pulse armor. And by the way, you are seeing it right. We are running the build overburdened by about 1500 weight. The only practical way around this without radically changing the build is to use this head, the Tian Kuang. We're not going to do that because it ruins the stability. This head is just really, really bad. I'd never use it if you can help it. Only for fashion. Um, we have the weight control OS chip installed so we can actually sortie while overweight and we're barely overweight so it's not going to affect our speed very much. You can download the Bombardier Beetle using this code. It'll be in the description for easy access. But without further ado, let's get into some PvP. So we're fighting a double Zimmerman's build here. I open with my ear shots, but I miss them because he jumps right before and that does disrupt your FCS. I could have manually aimed them, but it's kind of annoying to swap between manual aim and soft lock. You have to go through hard lock as one of the stages, so it's pretty annoying. Our, our, our ear shots are back off cooldown, so we will splash him with those and get some good stun going. An electric proc also makes him stop, and we're just going to dodge the Zimmermans as much as possible. That's our only damage mitigation on this build. We don't have a shield or anything, we just got to dodge his Zimmermans. As soon as we see his arms come up, I hammer that shift key, and fortunately we uh, are able to avoid them. He's very aware of the ear shots, he's paying attention to those tones, and he has a very light build, so he's going to keep dodging them. We will keep pressuring him with them as much as we can, just keep his energy low. And he does stop there to cast Assault Armor, and we land one of the ear shots. The other one gets eaten by the Assault Armor, but his health is pretty much wrecked, and he's not landing his Zimmerman, so we do win. GG, we dodged a lot of damage that round. In this match, we're facing a wheelchair build, very fast, probably significantly faster than me in terms of pure boosting speed. He's got keep away missile hell weapons, he's got an apparative missile launcher in one of his hands, got a, a coral rifle, and on his back there's the Trueno needle launcher missiles. Um, so I just take this opportunity to reset my stun gauge, kind of hug these missiles, and you know, if you get stunned on a build this squishy and a salvo of missiles hits you, it's kind of just over, I would have died. My ear shots come off cooldown and I can hit him with them because he's a big tanky boy. Make sure to jump before shooting them, you know, so that the splash hits him if the missiles themselves do not. And here in the second round, I open with the ear shots very early and make sure to jump before doing so. This is why we have the knock trier legs on. They jump really quickly. I try to keep my stun pistols on him as much as possible, and this is always very important against the builds that run away. You don't want to give them time to breathe. So my ear shots come off of cooldown and we're in range because I kept electric proccing him with the pistols, which mini stuns, and we win. Into the next fight, we're facing a guy who has a Zimmerman, a grenade launcher, the uh, laser drone things, I forget what they're called precisely, and one other weapon that I can't really remember. 
But in any case, the most dangerous thing he has is the Zimmerman. We're going to do our best to dodge that. Um, the grenade is pretty easy to dodge. He's not even using one of the, the really big ones like us. So uh, we jump up, shoot our ear shots. Uh, he has a very ground level kind of build. He doesn't really fly around a lot, so the ear shots are going to land mostly every time. Um, even if he started dodging them, we could just manual aim them. And here into the second round, we open with ear shots. He's starting to get a bit more aerial. He, he realizes that the ear shots are very threatening if you stay ground level, but kind of too late by this point. He's already burnt his pulse armor, and uh, yeah, he's just mostly defenseless at this point. Uh, my ear shots are going to be coming off of cooldown any moment now, and that's a big damage spike that he's not really going to be able to do anything about because his armor is burnt. And we win. One match. I'm glad he didn't have two Zimmermans. So this match we're going to be facing a light build that has a ducket, plasma missiles, and one of the laser blades. Um, right here at the start, I think that he's going to go behind me for some reason, but he doesn't. So I just kind of flick at nothing. But my ear shots still hit. And combined with an electric proc from the stun pistols, his health is just gone. He only has like 8k HP. So he, he is dead, unfortunately. This is one of those builds where as long as I stay out of his melee, there's really no way for me to lose. Uh, I just have so much more damage than him. And my build, frankly, is more evasive than his because of the knock dryer legs. So I can actually win the neutral even without the ear shots, but with them, it's not even close, man. Uh, and there's really just no way for him to win with this build, unfortunately. You can see him trying to land a Hail Mary charge attack with his melee, but it does not work. And Thermal Armor will only save you for a couple seconds. But GG, that was a fun match. So here we're facing a Skybox missile spam kind of guy, and people ask me how to beat these builds a lot. You basically want to Assault Boost at them and just don't let them breathe. Don't let them breathe. You need a high capacity generator to really stick with them. That's why almost all my builds have really high cap generators. And yeah, you can see I'm just sticking to him, not letting him shoot his missiles because of the uh, electric mini stun procs. Using my ear shots whenever they're off cooldown, and yeah. It's still actually kind of close, which is funny. <laughs> These Skybox missile builds really are brainless to play. But uh, I do win in the end. Here in the second round, we're going to dodge the first salvo, kind of hug it as close as possible so they stop tracking, and we land the ear shots into an electric proc. That's a very good start. Um, our st stun gauge is kind of high, so we're going to pop pulse armor and kind of avoid getting wrecked. We are very squishy. One salvo could change everything here. This pulse armor pops, but uh, he wasn't tracking me. He wasn't locked on when he fired that salvo, which kind of sealed his fate. I didn't have to dodge that entire salvo of missiles, and the next one doesn't really hit either, so my ear shots will close it out. Uh, GG. So this fight, we're facing another skybox missile build. His build is slightly different though. He has flamethrowers for when people get close to him. I've seen this a decent amount recently. Usually it's not a flamethrower, it's more like a melee or something. You see lances pretty often. Uh, his missile output is going to be significantly lower than the last guy as a result. He's foregoing one of the aperitive hand missile launchers, the, the ones that look like pine cones, and those are really the main threat of missile hell builds. So he really should have put the flamethrower in a shoulder bay and then kept both of the apparatives, but uh, live and learn, I guess. Second round, pretty much the same strategy as ever. We just gonna assault boost in, use our ear shots to get some stun going, get an electric proc on him. Many stuns as we can get, we'll take them all. Uh, as soon as our stun gauge is full, we're gonna pop pulse armor and keep pressuring him as much as we can. Never want to let the skybox guys breathe, otherwise we'll be 500 meters away from you, peppering you with missiles. And GG. So this build we're fighting is a missile build with two melee weapons. He's got like a lance and one other melee that I forget. So he kind of wants to draw you in with the missiles, make you run at him, and then pull out his lance and kind of just face roll you with it. Uh, this is kind of common now, I see this fairly often. 
You basically want to hug the missiles and then dodge the melee as much as you can. It's kind of a one-dimensional build. Once you know what they're doing, you can pretty well play around it. He's got the laser blade there, but uh, yeah, he makes himself predictable and we're able to land the ear shots. This round we open with the ear shots ASAP again. It's kind of what you want to do most rounds because you want to maximize the DPS of those grenade launchers by getting them on cooldown. I missed the kick because I'm in soft lock and uh, I'm bad. <laughs> soft lock is really fun, but it, it does make kicking significantly worse. Like the tracking of it is just inferior to hard lock. But uh, yeah, we win anyway. This round we're facing a guy who has like all of the coral weapons. It's almost a, a roleplay build or something. He's got the coral oscillator and uh, you'll just see he's coraled out. There's the coral rifle right there. Uh, he's ground level so we do land the ear shots right away. One thing I love about this build is the amount of stuns it puts out. Right? You stun people even more than a Zimmerman build because you're stunning with the ear shots, you're stunning with the electric pistols, which have a, the electric proc mini stun. It's a crazy amount of uptime. You stun more than the purest stun builds because those have a, like a, a cooldown on the stun. You know, there's that period when the stagger bar is red and you really can't do anything to stun them. But this one kind of bypasses that by having two different kinds of stun. And you can see he really, he's just quarreling, he's quarreling so hard. This is one of those builds that kind of makes you smile. It's just silly. I think the guy's a total giga chat for using this many coral weapons in an actual PvP match. So uh, GG to him. We rematch him afterwards and he has a similar build. I think he added like a moonlight or something. But he's still very coraled out. He, he's coraled out of his mind. He's got coral missiles, coral rifle. And he opens with the coral rifle, of course. Uh, we're just gonna get in close. He really doesn't have consistent DPS to land on us. Uh, he does land assault armor with no animation. I think he's Japanese, so the ping sometimes does that. But the ear shots will make up the difference there. And, and one electric proc is all we need to kill him, which we do get. So a good round. Even though we got hit by the assault armor, the ear shots are just too strong, man. You hit hit him with those once, and it's over. You rarely see that moonlight attack, that, that charge attack, um, especially on the red version because it's actually weaker than on the regular moonlight. Uh, LOS, the, the coral missiles, those can actually instant give you if they hit you on a light build. So we want to avoid those. And now we just pressure him with the ear shots and the, uh, the stun pistols. He's pretty much dead here. Even with me missing my kick like an idiot. GG Mr. Coral Man, you are very fun to play against. I'd like to face you on a more honest build sometime. So this match we're facing against an electric build. He has like one of every electric weapon. He's got the electric pistol, the electric dart launcher, and the electric bomb launcher. Um, it's kind of a bad mix of things. He can't really hit all of them at once. They have different effective ranges, so he kind of gets beaten by the pure electric pistol build here, unfortunately. Here in the second round, uh, Pretty much the same pattern, he's not able to land all of his different weapons. Mostly he's just landing the pistol, but we're managing our electric build up so we're not going to let him get a proc. We'll just pop the shield if, if that starts to get high. He is dodging the ear shots well, so props to him for that. Seems like a good player, he just needs to rethink his build a little. He actually hits me with the electric bombs right there, which you rarely see. We pop our assault armor to stop the proc from happening and continue pressuring with the ear shots. And he really can't do anything. The shield was just too opportune. GG. Uh, here in this match, we're playing on a map that I don't really see very often. We tend to kind of lose each other at the start of the round for, the, for this match. And uh, I think we're just playing Ring Around the Rosy, actually. But I do eventually find him. He almost falls off there. Uh, I think his build is one Zimmerman, one missile launcher? I can't really tell what he has on his back. Maybe a melee? And he's running assault armor as you see. But yeah, as long as we stay away from that Zimmerman, we're gonna be just fine. He doesn't have the most damage in the world, excepting that one weapon. 
And here at the start of the next round, I've been looking for him for literally half a minute. I, I don't know where he is. I think he went under briefly, or, or we've just been ring around the rosying for a super long time. I don't know. Eventually I find him, and uh, I'm going to make up for lost time here. I fall off the map and hit some kind of hose thing that saves me. My savior, truly. Uh, gravity is my enemy. The earshots land because he was trapped in a melee animation. I think I think he was trying to punch me or something. But yeah, it's all downhill from here. He doesn't really have any way to get through the pulse armor, and we win. GG. I saved this build for last because I think it's the most interesting one that we ran into. He's running dual bullet orbits and dual vientos, so very heavy impact build. He gets hit with the earshots at the start of the match because he's probably not familiar with these weapons, doesn't see them very often, and just wasn't expecting it. Anyway, when his orbits come out, I'm so sort of afraid of, of getting stunned that I pop the pulse armor early, but uh, he's not really able to capitalize on the early activation. His health is already low from the first hit of the earshots. So. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a follow. I'll be posting more AC6 builds and uh, PvP using very odd builds like this one. I also stream the game over at twitch.tv slash minder. That link is in the description. You can drop a follow there if you like. Anyway, till next time, bye bye